Hirohiko Araki, the never-aging mastermind behind JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, a best-selling manga author, a fan favorite, and a fashion icon. A person who has had a huge impact in the world of manga and anime with his hit manga JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I believe it makes sense that if one wants to document the rise of JoJo, one should first take a look at the author behind the manga. Hirohiko Araki was born on June the 7th, 1960, which makes him 61 years old as of the publishing of this video. He was born and raised in Sendai, a large city north of Tokyo known for its Gyutan, multiple historic sites related to the Date clan, beautiful scenery, and more recently, a rather sarcastic British person who is YouTuber. Hey, <laughs> Are you YouTuber? I am. Chris Broad. Araki was the older brother to his younger twin sisters, which he jokingly claims he would have killed had it not been for manga. Due to him and his sisters frequently clashing, Araki often escaped them by burying himself in the world of manga, a passion which he had inherited from his father who was an office worker. His favourite was Aito Makoto, by the way, a story about Makoto, a troubled high school student arriving in Tokyo to exact revenge for a previous incident. There he falls in love with Ai, a girl from a rich family. However, both of them have other admirers who are vying for their love. The manga is a cult classic in Japan, despite not receiving much attention in the West, and has four live-action adaptations. But at this point you might be wondering, everybody reads manga, what made him want to draw? The answer Araki gives is also thanks to his father, more specifically his father's art books. The classical theme of these art books can easily be connected to Araki's drawing style, which stands out like a sore thumb in the world of manga and anime, his primary influence being French artist Paul Gorgon. After his work had been praised by a few of his classmates, Araki secretly started drawing manga in fourth grade. He then started pitching his manga to publishers in his first year of high school, all of which were rejected. These rejections, along with the fact that younger artists than him were finding success, made Araki formulate a plan to travel to Tokyo, march into the Shogakukan, publishers of Weekly Shonen Sunday, and demand an explanation for his rejections. However, the sheer size of the building intimidated him, making him enter the Shueisha building, the publishers of Weekly Shonen Jump, instead to pitch his newest creation, which he had stayed up all night to finish. The editor he pitched for manga to criticised the work page by page which exhausted Araki but saw potential and made him finish up the one-shot in time for the Tezuka Award, an award held by Shueisha which aspiring mangaka submit their one-shots to for a chance to appear in a magazine and maybe receive a serialization. And so his first one-shot, Poker Under Arms, was published in 1980 after becoming a selected work in the Tezuka Award. The one-shot has a western theme and focuses on two cowboys, each with a bounty of $10,000 on their head. These two bandits named Don Peckinpah, who is likened to the devil, and Mike Harper, who looks a bit like Speedwagon, or should I say that Speedwagon looks like Mike Harper, play a one-on-one -on -one game of poker, when Peckinpah suggests that they play for their guns, meaning that one of them will leave the table defenseless without guns to defend themselves from bounty hunters and the law. His first serialization came to him in 1982 to 1983 with his work titled Cool Shock BT, which follows BT and his unwilling friend Koichi as they solve mysteries sometimes through barely legal means. His next serialization was his other notable work besides Jojo, titled Bao, which was serialized from 1984 to 1985. Bao follows the 17-year-old Ikuro Hashizawa, who is kidnapped and turned into a bio weapon known as Bao. As a Bao, he possesses superhuman strength and abilities, which he uses to escape the laboratory he is being held captive in, together with the 9-year-old psychic girl Sumire. However, since the Bao virus is infectious, the head of the laboratory, Professor Kaso Minome, sends multiple monsters and assassins after Ikuro to try and stop him from spreading the Bao virus. But this manga is more than just another one of Araki's work. Bao could even be called a precursor to Jojo. Let's just take a closer look. Bao is the first manga which features Araki's extremely striking art style with large muscular men. It is also Araki's first manga which features his signature amount of gore. Another thing that Araki introduced to his skill set with his manga was fighting, something which had previously not played a major role at all. And Araki's habit of drawing poses also seems to have originated from his manga. This is also the first manga in which Araki drew something supernatural, something that would continue throughout his later works including Jojo. And one more thing I noticed while researching this is that Bao bears a striking resemblance to both Star Platinum and Cars to a lesser extent. Just take a look and let me know whether you think so too in the comments, but I think I can definitely see a resemblance. Anyway, back onto the main topic. The manga then ended after running for around half a year and was released in two volumes. Araki then solidified and developed his art style with his next work after Bao, which was titled Sweet Irene, which appeared in two 40-page chapters and all I can say is that this story is rather bizarre. Let me read the summary of the first chapter which can be found on jojowiki.com, the link will be in the description, so here we go. <clears throat> Irene Rapona is a teenage girl with a youthful face and gentle personality. Despite being really gullible and innocent, she is secretly a professional assassin who is able to transform into any type of woman using special makeup. Due to her personality, she is bullied by her classmates. A young man is taken to Irene by her butler. He hires Irene for assassinating Lorpa, a female gang leader in the fictional swing town. 
Lopo replaced the former leader and killed the young man's father. Murders and the crime rate increased and even children and elderly were not spared. Lopa starts selling drugs in schools and only keeps female slaves with her in her gang. Ten days later, the man is caught by Lopa as she discovers that he hired an assassin. Irene reveals herself as an old woman who was hired in the gang. She uses her battle makeup to transform her appearance as well as enhance her killer instincts. The gang fires their guns at her, but Irene had replaced all their bullets with blanks while she was previously working with them. She tricks them by having the actual bullets hidden in her glove, making it appear as if she caught the bullets. Irene then fires her fake nails at each gang member and kills all of them, aside from Lopa. Lopa attempts to attack Irene with a giant chainsaw, but Irene dodges all of it and learns Lopa's movements with her special death dance. Irene's heart magic allows her to take control of Lopa's body after Lopa smells the scent of her perfume. She manipulates Lopa into cutting herself in half with her chainsaw by using her execution makeup. Irene expresses sorrow that the young man spoke about her to Lopa. She lets him live because she had promised to and then leaves. I think you get my point. You can read the second chapter summary, which is just as weird as the first one, on jojowiki.com. Link will be in the description. One thing that does stand out though about the second chapter is Irene's meeting with a man named Michael, who looks almost identical to Jonathan Joestar. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. Okay, I already see one. Give him. Okay. They're the same picture. Even back in his early career, one can see that Araki broke the rules of manga a lot. The most notable examples are his art style, but more importantly, the setting of his manga. Araki's manga, like Sweet Irene and Poker Under Arms, took place in foreign countries and featured foreign characters, something which was extremely uncommon in the 80s in Japan. However, all of these differences helped Araki stand out in the manga scene, and the fact that his manga was popular despite featuring foreign characters showed that Araki was on the right track. After Sweet Irene had ended, Araki and his editor often met up at a family restaurant chain named Jonathan's. For those of you who are unaware, Japan has multiple chains of family restaurants which serve food and drinks at an affordable price and are seen in many anime. It was there that Araki suggested to his editor that he name the main character of his manga Jonathan. The manga he was preparing was, of course, Thank you very much for watching the first part, I hope you enjoyed it and if you did you might want to press the subscribe and like buttons and maybe even share the video with your friends. Uh, I also have an Instagram too, at uh, leniaw underscore yt. Thanks in advance for doing all of that and uh, have a nice day. Oh and by the way all the links to the stuff that I researched will be in the description so if you want to check it out then feel free to. See you next time!